Now I would like to, um, we will talk about the joint innovation partnership between India and Sweden that was signed in 2018. And in this session, you will learn about the many different collaborations that are happening within this partnership and some of the plans for the future. I now give the word to Mr. Eric Ostet from the Swedish Ministry of Enterprise and Innovation, who will be the moderator for this session. Eric, a warm welcome. And also for your information, Eric is really like the true friend of India. You've been such a great support. And thank you so much for always, you know, um, bringing that energy to this discussion. Thank you. Well, thank you, Sandeep. Yeah. Thanks to all the organizers for making this the eighth edition of the India Sweden Innovation Day. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Um, like uh, Sandeep said, I'm working at the Ministry of Enterprise and Innovation in Sweden. Uh, my name is Erik Åstedt, and I'm the manager of the innovation partnership between Sweden and India. And uh, we heard the ministers uh, before saying that this is a partnership that was signed in 2018, and there's a lot of things that happened since. And I really want to stress the, 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 the importance of this being an agreement on the highest level between our two prime ministers. And it is a strong message that India and Sweden will work together to co-create and co-develop innovations for a sustainable future. And this is a partnership that covers many areas. It covers health, climate, digital digitalization, smart cities, transportation. It also involves many different stakeholders on both sides. Policymakers, government agencies, innovation hubs and companies. So all this sounds really great, doesn't it? But I'm sure that some of you are wondering, what does this really mean? What does the actual collaboration look like? today and what would it look like in the future? Well, today we will try to answer those questions. So in this session, you will learn about the diversity of the collaborations within the partnership, ranging from India and Sweden driving heavy industry transition, startup matchmaking events, co-funded bilateral innovation projects in areas such as food tech and medicine. So I'm really excited to introduce today's speakers and you have some of them to my left, and also, I hope, yes, lovely, we have a few people joining us digitally as well. So happy to have you here. We will listen to uh, Dr. Geksha Mete. You are the head of secretariat for the leadership group for industry transition at Stockholm Environment Institute. We also have uh, Mr. Sassan Shaba. You're the director of international cooperation at Ignite Sweden. And we're very happy to have, uh, from the office of the Principal Scientific Advisor to the Government of India, Dr. Sapna Poti, who is the Director of Strategic Alliances. And we will also listen to Mr. Erik Monson. You are the CEO of the very interesting food tech company, Innocentia AB. Also very happy to have with us Professor Vrisha Mathuri, uh, Dr. Vrisha is a uh, professor, Vrisha, I should say. You are a professor in medicine at the Christian Medical College in Velora in India. And finally, <coughs> I'm also re really happy to have my colleague, Dr. Per Arne Wikström. You are the science and innovation counselor at the Embassy of Sweden in New Delhi. Those are the speakers. And without further ado, very happy to give the word to Dr. Gersh Mete. And I'm really curious about Leadership Group for Industry Transition. Um, this is a United Nations initiative, but what is really the importance of India and Sweden being in charge of the Leadership Initiative? And this is an innovation day, so, so maybe you could comment on the role of innovation in the work that you do. And of course, looking ahead, what do you see for the future in terms of how Swedish and Indian stakeholders can take the lead and really be a positive example in this transition? Please, comment. Thanks, Eric. <clears throat> I'll try to give it a go. Um, well, indeed, LEADED has been um, established in 2019 at the UN Climate Action Summit. Um, Sweden and India are co-leads of this initiative, but the, the initiative itself actually brings together 16 countries around the world, including Korea, Argentina, um, several European countries, Ethiopia, among them and 19 um, heavy industry companies also around the world. Several of them are uh, Indian companies, and of course we have Hybrid and Volvo uh, among the group. Um, now this <coughs> initiative was set up to accelerate um, 
when and raise uh, national ambition in in nationally determined uh, contributions and long term national strategies on on heavy industries. Um, and indeed, we have started as a platform for policy dialogue, which is, of course, crucial for enabling innovation. Um, but we have been uh, really also facilitating a knowledge exchange uh, among our members. And Sweden and India had been really successfully cooperating on outreach um, because we are really looking at global stock take in this initiative, uh, where we are in, in 2023, how many countries have actually um, embarked on detailed plans for decarbonizing their heavy industries. Um, when I started, um, if you, well, when I started a year ago already uh, with this project, we used to call these sectors um, harder to abate, and I'm seeing the language change, that we, we started to call steel and cement easier to abate uh, industries. Um, so part of it is, is, of course, this great collaboration. We are seeing also among the group, um, the cooperation between Volvo and Hybrid is a good example. Um, but it also has helped that we have grown in numbers. So India and Sweden have successfully um, embarked on, a, on an outreach, so we now have US in the group. And they are now uh, actively pursuing efforts to include also Japan, Indonesia, Vietnam in this group. And it, it will really add value because having those two partners has been important because we are really the only initiative on industry transition that has a focus on uh, developing countries. There's no other example of that. Um, so this year we've been working on uh, um, establishing financing principles, acknowledging the needs of the global south in accelerating finance. Uh, and I guess most importantly, we, we work on roadmaps. Um, so we built within the leadership group, we built a methodology on road mapping based on uh, Sweden's experience with fossil free Sweden. And right. we've, we've taken that methodology and sort of adapted it to a global framework. Um, and India will be the first country that lead it will support in um, in this road mapping process. So Sweden and India really work closely in that process. We cooperate with local uh, research organizations like Terry in India and GIZ are also involved. Um, so this will really be a great example, Eric, um, where we will see in the cement and concrete sector a sort of a collective buy-in on what cement decarbonization may look like in, in India. And innovation is an important part, right? Of course, and that's the, that's the point. <laughs> within, within the lead, it, I think the core of this, this group is really that all the partners, once you join lead, it, you actually commit to the belief that um, that industry transition stands a greater chance if public and private cooperate, because the, the challenge is great. It's easier to innovate, we call it, but it's still a great challenge. Um, so that, that is one, one thing, and we really, India and Sweden collectively, really encourage all the country and company members to adopt roadmaps and to update them. And roadmaps may mean vision strategies, but they really actively pursue this role. Yeah. And maybe I'll finish with noting that the, it, it is also a prime minister level initiative. Um, and uh, this year, um, prime ministers of India and Sweden also collectively called on a lead it, uh, group and lead it secretariat hosted by Stockholm Environment Institute um, to establish principles for a global cement and steel decarbonization strategy. Um, lead it and Sweden collectively host the lead it summit. So that will be at COP26. Um, and following on that, we, we are really looking into sort of publishing our strategy for cement and uh, steel decarbonization, again, led by India and Sweden. I'm really happy to hear about this. And, and of course, India and Sweden are really pushing the agenda and, and pushing these roadmap developments. Uh, so thank you so much, Geksha. Uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Sassan Shaba, uh, <coughs> Ignite Sweden. That's very interesting. That's a very interesting initiative, Sasan. Uh, you recently held a matchmaking event between Swedish startups and Indian corporates. Can you please tell us a little bit about this event? Uh, what are you trying to achieve and, and why are you doing this with, with India? Uh, thank you so much, Eric, and happy to be here, all of you. Uh, it's a pleasure to work with India. It, it was our first matchmaking uh, between uh, Swedish startups and Indian corporates. Uh, I loved what Artie said about walk the talk uh, and walk the talk adding together with concrete results. Uh, so I think I have a small PowerPoint just to show you the results of it. And I think what I'm 
proud of is, of course, all the partners that was participating in creating this match day. Uh, together is key. Uh, we had everything from the embassy to our local partners, CII, um, SIBC, NASCOM, etc. We're very happy to do this with them. Uh, and bringing the core Indian giants, I would say, not only corporates, to the table to meet the right high-tech or low-tech startups from Sweden. Uh, corporates that participated, five of them, as you see here, it's quite huge ones, uh, not small corporates from, it could be as Sweden, 5,000, 10,000 employees, but 200,000 employees. Um, and of course, we're very happy to have their high-level innovation departments uh, on board on this matchmaking day. Uh, we succeeded with doing this matchmaking day with 24 uh, tech startups from Sweden. Many of them, I would love to just go back to the uh, last session where battery technology was an interesting area. Propulsion, I would add to that AI. Uh, technology in AI regarding battery systems, maintaining batteries was one of the topics. Uh, and we had 37 meetings uh, with a follow-up so far on 30% of the matchmaking uh, meetings that will take a next step. Uh, we haven't uh, yet followed up with all the corporates. Uh, still, uh, we have uh, a little work to do on that. But we expect to have about 45% of follow-ups uh, on the startups. And that's something that we are very proud of, bringing uh, tech startups from Sweden to Indian giants. Uh, and of course, why India? Yeah. We have heard it before. <laughs> It's a great ecosystem, uh, innovation ecosystem. We see a lot of interest from the corporates uh, to meet the startups, and I think this could be reversed, doing it on the, uh, on, on the startups from India to Swedish corporates, for example. Uh, and there's a lot of great collaboration happening already, and I think that collaboration is key to create concrete results to achieve, if it's global goals, or I would say more, more interesting, reducing CO2 emissions in this case. And startups can really con contribute to this, a lot of development and innovations that can be acquired by larger companies. And yeah, I, I think it's key, actually. Uh, we heard it from uh, Volvo Group saying that, Campex. Uh, we had l and uh, with us also on the matchmaking. We had Tech Mahindra, Tata. All of them wants to meet startups, tech startups from all over the world, that can solve their challenges and, and the challenges that actually comes from the society. Yeah. So definitely startups are a key player in that. Well, it's interesting, Sasan, that you mentioned uh, Indian startups because India has a very vibrant and very interesting startup ecosystem. And, and I think the next speaker will tell us a little bit about the potential for, for working with, with startups, uh, uh, Indian startups with Swedish companies. Uh, I would like to welcome Dr. Sapna Poti. You are the Director of Strategic Alliances at the Office of the Principal Scientific Advisor to the Government of India. Uh, I know that you uh, have, a, have a love for startups and the Indian startup ecosystem and innovation hubs, and et, et cetera. Uh, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about your priorities regarding strategic alliances, alliances and, and, and your work at the PSA office, Principal Scientific Advisor's office. What opportunities do you see for collaborating with Sweden? Please thank you. Forward. Thank you so much, Eric. It's been a pleasure uh, being here today. A um, couple of uh, priorities that I would like to uh, you know, uh, touch upon. Uh, first of all, we need to look at uh, what is the milieu that we are in, and then we look at the value chain, and then finally uh, prioritize. Uh, we have a very good demographic dividend as a nation, as you would be aware. Uh, technologically, also, we are quite advanced, uh, and uh, I don't think we are a developing country anymore. We have several um, startups, um, you know, I think one of the highest in terms of the numbers and uh, quite a few of them working on social impact areas. Um, a lot of them are also, uh, you know, um, uh, kind of getting to know the industry problem statements and thanks to the Office of uh, PSA as well as the uh, Department of Science and Technology, which is outreaching the industry problem statements to these startups and they are resolving some of these um, uh, issues and aligning to the industry. 
and um, um, and the value chain that we work on uh, is completely from the research angle of an innovation because every innovation also has a huge amount of r and d to be undertaken uh, to the you know the fact that uh, you need investors you need uh, market strategies you need vision and so on and then finally market ready innovations which uh, basically are uh, you know um, provided to the uh, i mean post uh, startup uh, innovations which are provided to the industry as well as to the government so in, in the entire value chain where we would like to focus is a lot on research uh, which also has innovation and um, you know kind of incubation of startups and so on so the prioritization is on centers of excellence uh, which we would like to have in some of the academic institutes uh, somebody mentioned terry uh, one of the speakers uh, talked about terry and terry is one of those which is focusing on circular economy similarly we have uh, centers of excellence on sludge management uh, on renewable energy and so on so uh, we would like to focus on social impact as well as industry r and d as much as possible through centers of excellence and that is one scope that sweden has uh, you know for for us to collaborate and set up centers of excellence the second one uh, would be on startup uh, uh, reverse uh, of ignite uh, where we would look would like industries of sweden to be interested in our startups uh, requesting them to provide their problem statements as well as their uh, announcements uh, which we could take to the startups uh, we work with about 50000 startups on a Uh, literally daily basis uh, we also work with 200 premier institutes almost all uh, iits nits icars agriculture universities drdos aims etc a huge number of national uh, you know um, academicians as well as uh, researchers and innovators is what we work with we are a single point of contact so that it's easier for uh, you know uh, organizations like yours or uh, countries like yours to uh, work with us uh, and the whole idea is how to uh, get everybody to collaborate uh, seamlessly so that uh, global issues are uh, you know solved because uh, no country can say that we will uh, you know uh, only focus on our own country uh, it's today you know all startups belong to uh, the global uh, yeah. you know requirements and needs thank you thank you so much and and it's really interesting that you mentioned the these innovation hubs and in in centers of excellence uh i do believe that we have a lot to to gain from connecting swedish innovation hubs swedish centers of excellence with with uh, with with similar places in in india um talking about startups uh i'm very interested in hearing about innocentia and your project your 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 food tech uh solutions Uh Mr. Erik Monson you are the CEO of Innocentia and you are working with smart food labels and I also know that you have an Indian co-founder uh, of the company so I'm very curious about learning a little bit about your project you're you're running a, a research and innovation project uh, together with partners in India yep. uh, could you please tell us a little bit Yeah of course I mean um, basically we are an Indian Swedish food tech company so we are clear evidence that people between in Sweden and India are great in working together and, and we've been doing that remotely uh, far beyond uh, this this pandemic that we've been in so we we're really used to to this type of working already um and I mean we've been talking a lot here today about different areas where we need to to innovate where we need to to move into a new type of of economy and I think the one that we haven't mentioned that much is the food industry I mean we have a growing population in the world uh, in India also in Sweden uh, and we need to make sure that we can feed them in a sustainable way. Um we are not one of the companies that making sure that we can produce in a new type of way but we are a company that thinks about how do we sort of make sure that we don't throw away what we have already produced. And I think we're all aware about the the food waste problem we're throwing away one third of what we produce it's a catastrophe in the western world it's even more in the US it's 50% it's crazy. Um and one of the things that that we all do is that we look at an expiry date and we say well this expired yesterday so I throw it away I don't even smell it I don't even taste it and what we want to do is we want to provide tools for the end consumer to take that decision in a better way so we have something as you say a, a label a dynamic shelf life label we call it that actually shows and indicate the status in real time of the product inside the package mm-hmm. so we start off with meat and we have developed this in house with together with, with our uh, our indian team so we have an indian co-founder mr rambab at lori um he used to live in sweden founded a company here and then moved back to india and we immediately decided to set up the lab there instead so we have a team of engineers 12 people now in, in hyderabad in india 
Uh, I usually say that all, all the smart people in the company are down there, and that's, that's actually true. Uh, so uh, we have uh, food technicians, we have chemists, uh, and a, lo a lot of fantastic people who are running this, this R&D at the moment. So uh, it's, it's, it's really, really interesting, and I'm, I'm super inspired by this type of collaboration and, and doing this together with them. Um, so what are your plans for the future? Taking over the world with your food labels? Yeah, of course. Re basically reducing food waste. That's always the plan as a startup, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's a hockey stick evol uh, evolvement. No, but uh, we, we just recently, or, or, or we're just in the end of a, of a big project now, we, which we got funded by Gita and, and uh, Vinova, which is a great way to prove that, that governmental support is, is an important part of the innovation uh, sort of society and, and way to promote innovation. Uh, and we're launching uh, and, and starting testing our first labels now in, in the market in, in, in the spring. So, so that's, that's super exciting. Um, and I think, I mean, when we talk about all this, um, when we talk about the different sort of organizations, the governmental um, collaborations, there's one part that we're missing. And that's basically that in the end, there is the fact that people have to work together. If we're going to do this shift, there has to be one two persons meeting uh, and they together do something together. Yeah. Of course, in a, in a bigger scale, but that's what we're going to do. And, and I think that working cross country, Sweden to India is a yeah. perfect example of that, because in Sweden, we have sort of a inspiration and ideas and we've seen proof of that is there is possible to do the shift. And in India, you are all sort of problem solvers. So you grow up solving problems. Even sometimes getting to work can be to solve a problem. We don't have that sort of problems here. We, we're so the government takes care of everything, and, and, and the infrastructure is already there. But in India, it, it's still a struggle sometimes. And if there's no power, well, then you go out and buy a generator and, and some diesel, and, and you're back on track. And we don't have that sort of mindset. So when we combine those two sort of yeah. groups, there is really magic happening. And that's that's what we see in our company every day. And yeah. I think that's the reason for why, why we need to continue this, this sort of collaboration together. It's this is sweet music to my ears. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. definitely sweet music. Yeah. And exactly what you mentioned, the people-to-people -people links, connecting people in Sweden and India, that's what it's all about. Yeah. And if Vinova and Gita, and we listened to Secretary Svarup from DST and DBT before, if, and, and the Director General Dari Isaksson, if, if we can support this type of people-to-people -people connections and... and, and, and co-funding and co-developing uh, innovations. That's really the goal of the innovation partnership. Definitely. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, Eric. Um, I would now like to uh, hear from Professor Vrisha Mathuri. Uh, professor Vrisha, you are a professor in medicine at the Christian Medical College in Velora. And, and I know that you have a very long, uh, long track record of, of research and, and, and medical uh, practice. Uh, I would love to hear a little bit about your project because you also are running a project that is co-funded by, by agencies and ministries in, in Sweden and, and, and India. I would love to hear about a, a little bit about your project and, and what, what does your collaboration with Sweden look like in this project, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Eric. I'm very happy to be part of these deliberations. So this project actually started many years before we were actually funded because we were following this type of cell therapy which was being developed in Sweden at Karolinska by Professor Cecilia Goethestrom. And we were watching this with interest and the chance meeting when I visited Sweden for one of the stem cell conferences, followed by my invitation to her to come and visit us in India. And immediately after that, we, the Vinova DBT uh, call was announced and we submitted our proposal for this project, which we call Boost to Brittle Bones, which was the use of the innovative fetal liver derived stem cells, which she had developed for use in treating children who had brittle bones, where they fractured easily, developed deformity, and are stunted in their growth for the rest of their life. So uh, this, what this partnership actually involved was that we used the cells which were developed and being manufactured by Vecura in Sweden and uh, using it in our very vast clinical arena that we had of actually more than 180 patients within our hospital itself. But uh, also we had the clinical expertise to do this clinical trial for using this in therapy and to adapt it for our population. Mm -hmm. So these cells were manufactured and they were exported by from Sweden to us. 
and we developed joint clinical protocols as well as adapted the cell therapy which they were giving prenatally to give after birth and to older children for us and instead of giving it venous we giving it to the veins into the blood we actually gave it directly into the bones to overcome some of the challenges which are there when we give allogeneic stem cell therapies so this uh, finally resulted in our developing clinical trial protocols which are totally new uh, developing transport protocols from uh, for which took more than one week sometimes about one week at a time from so student to here of these cryo preserved cells then testing of these cells and then developing uh, outcome measures which were suitable for our population um, india is actually um, um, home to one third of these little bone children and uh, from and even though it's a fairly rare disorder we have about uh, uh, 130000 of these patients in india so this has actually um, now resulted in completing our at least one patient has completed the treatment and instead of being stunted we have actually a normal child with normal quality of life and normal growth uh, criteria that is uh, seen for our other indian children and we have two other patients who are undergoing treatment we have shown that it is safe for our children and we have also found that this particular type of treatment is as low immunogenicity for our children yeah um so i i mean it 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 sounds wonderful and and i'm so happy to hear i mean the lives of of those children uh, the the prospect of of a life without those those uh, diseases and without those problems and challenges if if we can contribute to that with with researchers from from Sweden and India uh, that's of course a, a very a very good task to to take on uh, so so um what are your visions for the future now do you, do you have uh, any upcoming plans for this project project what is yeah. what is the next steps so the next steps is that actually this project helped us a lot because we uh, acquired very excellent protocols on how to uh, develop the uh, pre uh, uh, clinical data for this uh, particular kind of therapies it helps us in de- developing other cell therapy products that we were developing in our own institution in addition to that i we felt that if this particular kind of therapy works then there is a, there are plans and we have discussed this with our partners of maybe manufacturing this particular these particular cells in india uh, for distribution in lmic this is another part of the thing that was discussed uh, so we are still waiting for the results of a la- larger study once that is uh, available then we could embark on this okay well that's very interesting and of course health and life science is is an important part of the the innovation partnership between sweden and india and i would also like to mention that we have a memorandum of understanding regarding health cooperation with the swedish ministry of of social affairs so so the health collaboration between sweden and india is is very strong in in many areas so thank you so much professor vrisha uh, it will be very interesting to follow your project uh and and um uh, we're coming to the end of this session and and uh, uh we have spoken a lot about these these uh, people to people links and and people actually doing the the legwork uh connecting Sweden and India and one person who is doing uh, this is is Dr. Perona Wikström you are the councilor of science and innovation and you're also the head of office at the office of science and innovation at the embassy of Sweden and and you and i we're working very close t- closely together and and you are leading the work uh, of the swedish office on science and innovation and and basically you are you are the implementing part of the the innovation partnership f- for sweden on site in new delhi could you please tell us a little bit about what kind of work do you do and how do you support swedish and indian stakeholders Uh, hello, uh, Eric and everyone. Uh, thank you for um, uh, having me here. Uh, well, first of all, uh, we'll, we're, we're doing a small part of, of, of course of everything this, and it was really interesting to listen to these two uh, case studies uh, earlier here. Um, and also, uh, on another level, I would like to actually to uh, mention the, the foundation that we have here. Uh, several speakers have, have mentioned that earlier on. I mean, the joint declaration that we have on the innovation, innovation partnership is uh, um, perhaps best described as, as a perfect soil for uh, uh, 
where to, to grow a tree or something like that. So, so I, I think the, the foundation is, is, is there and that helps us, of course, a lot uh, in, in our work. And, and also that we, um, I mean, my, it's, it's a small team that we have here at uh, the Office of Science and Innovation at the Embassy. Um, so we, we definitely need to have a lot of contacts with the different stakeholders everywhere, both in India and in Sweden. And uh, I, I, I thank you for all the good collaboration that we have, Eric, and all the other ones uh, listening to this. Um, so if we talk about the collaboration as a, as a tree that we have planted together, Sweden and India, I would say that we we know that, that it's uh, this tree is based on innovation-driven uh, uh, challenges uh, and cross-sectoral issues with uh, multi-stakeholder agency participation for both countries and that's of course a very complicated task to to work with. Uh, we have heard uh, mentioning here the areas such as uh, smart cities, uh, energy, clean technologies, uh, space, circular economy and health and life science of course. So we have plenty of different uh, areas that we work with uh, and we also know that um, we have a, a lot of stakeholders that we need to, to work together with and, and everything uh, is also, um, you know, guidelined by the sustainability approach. So what we are doing um, in short would be that we are trying to facilitate collaboration uh, first uh, with partnership developing uh, activities, of course, uh, we have uh, startup collaboration and incubation activities that we are uh, trying to uh, both uh, take part in but also uh, facilitate, of course. We uh, support um, uh, R&D and I uh, infrastructure and test beds uh, activities and, and also uh, uh, facilitate when we have these high-level uh, dialogues that we mentioned uh, before that lead, lead uh, to this uh, uh, joint uh, declaration and this partnership. So, so we... Uh, that, that might be a description of what we do, uh, Eric. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so, it's okay. And if we talk, yeah, sorry. Please go ahead. I inter interrupted you. No, no problem. Uh, but if we, if we talk about the activities, I mean, there are so many activities going on here. And we have, uh, uh, since the beginning uh, of the partnership uh, only, we've seen uh, about 30 uh, research and development and innovation related projects. Uh, uh, where we have DST, DBT, Vinova, uh, and, and all the other Swedish funding uh, bodies uh, participating. So, and, and all this uh, continues, of course. And uh, we, I think we have about 10 more projects uh, in the pipeline, and you heard about that uh, earlier on today in the inauguration. Yeah. Uh, by the way, look at the inauguration. Uh, all these uh, participants show that we, we have a strong foundation, definitely. Um, but if I can give you some examples, maybe, I mean, I, I mentioned smart status as sustainability uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, uh, as concepts, but we have, uh, of course, we've had um, um, the, the first, I think, ever India-Sweden high-level dialogue on innovation policy that we have to, uh, had together with uh, PSA. So thank you, uh, uh, PSA, uh, for, for doing that together with, uh, with us, with the agency. Uh, we've had um, uh, in 2019 the Swedish Energy Agency um, earmarked uh, an additional 25 million kroner uh, about uh, over four years for research and innovation collaboration. Uh, and, and from there on, we have had uh, a new grant funding to implement projects aimed at producing new solutions uh, uh, within AI. We talked about that earlier on today. Um, we had uh, the, the India-Sweden Collaboration Industrial Research and Development Program. Um, so, so uh, and that's in the area of smart So we have plenty of examples. Uh, I, could, I could continue for a long time. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that we could keep talking about all these initiatives <laughs> for half an hour, Parana. But I think the main message here is that you are here to support Swedish and Indian stakeholders uh, in any type of collaboration regarding science and innovation. And, and really, I would like to encourage all the viewers who are interested in, in, in collaborating with India or with Sweden to reach out to, to the Office of Science and Innovation. And, and uh, to wrap this up, I, I see that we are running out of time. 
uh, of course, I mean, I mean, I hope that you, uh, the viewers, really feel and, and, and can see the diversity of, of the innovation partnership. And I think what we've been hearing here today from these very high level discussions, startup matchmaking and very concrete research and innovation projects uh, in, in medicine and other areas, connecting uh, centers of excellence and so on. Uh, the future is indeed looking very bright. So um, I just want to say thank you for watching. Thank you so much to all the speakers. It's been excellent and lovely having you here. And from the Swedish Ministry of Enterprise and Innovation, I just want to say that we do look forward very much to continuing supporting these projects, these initiatives and many other collaborations in the future. So thank you very much.